Hello everyone out there on YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego. And today we're going to continue to talk about Till There Was You. That's right. Till There Was You. Uh, that rom-com from 1997 is actually one of my favorite rom-coms that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've watched a lot of rom-coms, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I watched this movie for the first time when it first came out. Uh, I was in the Marines and I was stationed on Camp Lejeune and they had a free theater there for us. So we went in there. I went in there and I watched a whole bunch of movies that I never would have watched if I had to pay for them. Okay. Because what else are you going to do when you're a fucking private and you got no fucking money and no car? All right. So that's what I did. I used to walk around the base and I hung out there on the weekends and I would watch a lot of movies, uh, action movies, horror movies, suspense, whatever the hell was out there at that time. And unfortunately, I didn't watch a lot of chick flicks and this was one of them. And I absolutely love this movie. Uh, uh, for me, for a long time, this was the gold standard. Uh, of, uh, of chick flicks, of rom-coms. Uh, I used to show this to a lot of girls that I dated. Uh, I would watch it for fun every once in a while, every year or so, maybe every two years or so. I'd pop it back in the DVD player and watch it again, usually when I was drunk, okay, <laughs> or depressed. <laughs> And I liked it. I thought it was very fun. Uh, I liked the way how the duality between the female's uh, love story and the man's love story and how they don't meet each other until the very end. Okay, I thought that was very cute, very charming. Uh, you know, the piano music, you know, the clothes, it's very 90s, you know. And, and I really relate a lot to, like, the male's character, okay. Uh, the character played by Dylan McDermott. He plays this guy named Nick Dawkins. And I really uh, could relate to his character, his background, his family life, how he grew up and why he acts the way he does as an adult. All that stuff made sense to me. Gwen, not so much, although I understood a little bit of it, but Gene Triplehorn is just too beautiful to, to, to pull off a fucking nerdy girl, okay? Uh, that's the kind of thing you want to give to, like, fucking, like, a Janine Garofalo or, or a Kristen Wiig. They could have pulled that off, okay? Uh, but not, not, not Gene Triplehorn. I mean, she was a model, for Christ's sake, okay? Uh, she'd been in an erotic thriller. She was in, in Basic Instinct, okay? And then she was in Waterworld, okay? Uh, an action-adventure uh, future dystopian movie with Kevin Cosner that pretty much destroyed almost everyone's career involved in that movie. And then this was the next movie she did after that. <laughs> she jumped into the rom-com industry, which uh, she did not do very well in, okay? And, and then, then she ended up on TV, okay? Because now she's aged out. She's too old now. Uh, but, you know, back when she was, you know, getting those leading lady roles, this is what she got. I think I think her agents were just trying her out on shit. Like, okay, we. she started off on television. She was she was on the Ben Stiller show, okay, from 1992, because Ben Stiller was fucking her at the time. So he put her on his TV show, which I love. I love that show. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. I still have every episode right here, okay? It was on Fox back when Fox was kind of brand new. Uh, very, very early 90s, okay? She was on that show for a little while. She was a side character. She wasn't one of the main cast. She was just, you know, the guy put his girlfriend in, his, in the fucking episodes, okay? Basically, that's what Ben Stiller did, okay? And she was a model, okay, back then, so she looked really, really good. But then, you know, as the 90s came along, she got, she got older, she got a little bit heavier, you know? And then they put her in other stuff. Like I said, they put her in Basic Instinct in 92. Uh, and that, that was the first movie she ever did. I mean, she was educated in Juilliard. She went to Juilliard. Yeah. Uh, then she does Basic Instinct, uh, like I said. And then she goes in and she does Waterworld. Okay, Basic Instinct uh, did, did very well. Uh, for some reason, they didn't really cast her that much in, in erotic thrillers anymore. Uh, her character died in that movie. Okay, and then all of a sudden she shows up in a Waterworld in the mid-90s. And that one, a sci-fi, a big budget movie, which destroyed a lot of careers. It was one of the biggest flops in Hollywood history. Okay, and then the next thing she did after that, she decided to go for the rom-com genre, which is this. This was her uh, foray into the rom-com genre, okay? <laughs> Which unfortunately did not do her career uh, very many favors. It did not. Okay, uh, this this uh, I did not realize it at the time when I saw this movie, but uh, people did not like this movie. Okay, this movie was uh, a flopped at the box office. It only cost like fifteen million to make this movie, and it only made like like eight million. Uh, so they lost money on this movie, and it wasn't that expensive to begin with. All right, you've got Sarah Jessica Parker in there before before Sex and the City, so you could get her for cheap uh, back then. You know, she hadn't fucking had a, her her acting career, her movie career had not had fizzled out by then. She hadn't been in very many uh, big budget movies that were that were that were successful that were profitable. The only one she really did was fucking like Hocus Pocus. I guess that was a fucking uh, success. Maybe I don't. I never fucking saw it. Still haven't seen it. Okay, but I know a lot of women love that movie. So maybe that was just a cult status movie. Like Footloose, she was in that too, but she was a, min a minor character in that. Uh, she done like Dudley Do Right. She did a bunch of fucking other rom coms, like indie independent rom coms and shit. You know, like lesbians and shit like that. You know, in New York, Upper East Side, New York. You know, the typical shit you see in Sex and City. But Sex and City is what really uh, catapulted her to stardom. But that wouldn't be for another year okay so she's still out there doing these independent movies uh for low pay at the time 
okay, when this movie came out. Uh, Dylan McDermott, uh, he, he'd done some low-budget movies, too. You know, uh, I, I think of fucking Hardware, which was a fucking Terminator fucking ripoff uh, that was absolutely horrible, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I mean, you talk about fucking feeling like shit when you walked out of the theater. I can't believe I paid money to go see that. It was a choice between that or Godfather 3, and I wanted to see uh, Hardware, <laughs> which was absolutely fucking horrible. And I love cheesy sci-fi movies. I love them. I love them, and this was fucking dog shit, okay? <laughs> I'll have to do a review on it. But anyway, but yeah, he was in that, and then he, okay, I guess he was in Steel Magnolias. He was doing a lot of rom-coms, too. He was dating Julia Roberts back in the late 80s, you know, all sorts of shit. He dated a lot of women. So anyway, so he's in this movie here, okay? You've seen him before. He's on The Practice. He's been, uh, he's been, he's been to the action movies, too, although, like, as a side character. He was in Olympus Has Fallen. I remember that with Ger Gerard Butler. He was, like, the evil fucking, uh, uh, Secret Service agent in that one, the double agent, one that kind of shit, working for the terrorists, that kind of shit. So he showed up around here and there, you know. He's done a lot of stuff here, okay? So he's in this, he plays Dick Dawkins, okay, this guy who grew up poor, but now he's an architect, okay, and uh, he grew up watching his favorite TV show, One Big Family, which is a, basically a spoof of the Brady Bunch slash Partridge family. He was in love with the little girls on the show, uh, her name was Fra Francesca Lanfield, and she played a character named Taffy, who's basically Jan Brady uh, from the Brady Bunch. He fell in love with her, just like I fell in love with Jan Brady when I was a little boy too, okay, watching the reruns of Brady Bunch, okay, and that was, that was also Gwen, uh, the female protagonist, okay, Gene Triplehorn's character, she also grew up watching that show, that was her favorite show too, okay, uh, so that's you got that going on here. They have parallel lives. They went to the same school. Uh, the two main characters, they actually met each other once and they bumped into each other as little kids. Uh, but she fell in love with the bully and he fucking, um, and then she got transferred to fucking uh, a private school. So she never saw him again. That kind of shit. And then he grew up poor. He got evicted from his apartment because his dad's a drunk, uh, out of work musician. His mom's a waitress. They got they got evicted from their apartment. He grew up poor. He's ashamed of his parents. He's ashamed of his childhood. He's even ashamed of his name. His real name is Nicholas uh, uh, Deca Decontis, okay? Uh, but whatever, uh, but he changed it to Nick Dawkins because uh, it sounds more American. All right. Uh, so there's that. He grows up to become an architect. All right. He goes to architecture school, but he feels like he's not very good. He feels like he's a pretender. Literally, they play that song when he's thinking and when he's doubting himself. Okay. Uh, he, he, his work is criticized. He doesn't like that. Uh, so, uh, and also, uh, he dates a lot of women, but the women are all upset with him because he doesn't uh, open up, up himself emotionally to them. Like, that's a fucking problem. Okay. Uh, you know, it's not a problem, ladies. Okay. Uh, you don't want to date a guy who's more emotional than you are. Okay, you really don't, okay? And a lot of you out there have, okay? And you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to do that, okay? Uh, but yeah, he won't do that. He won't cry in front of them. He won't open up his heart to any of the girls that he's boning. Yeah, big problems, right? And they get pissed off at that. Yeah, no, they don't. No, they don't. In real life, they don't. In real life, they don't, okay? That's just in the chick flicks, okay? Because they want guys to watch this shit and think like, oh, they need to be more emotional in order to win her heart. No, bullshit. You're going to win her heart by not being emotional, okay? She's got enough emotional for the both of you. Okay, she's got enough drama for the both of you. Okay, you don't need, you need to be her anchor. Okay, you need to be the, the solid foundation that she comes to when she can't handle her own fucking shit. Okay, don't be another fucking basket case like her. Okay, and spaz out when shit gets hard. Okay, that's not a real man. Okay, you've got to be the strong one in the relationship. All right, so this whole bullshit about her screaming at him because he won't fucking open up emotionally. Get the fuck out of here with that noise. Anyway, he's been lying about his childhood. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's ashamed of it. Uh, he told his girlfriend that his dad died. Or some shit when he was three years old. And his mom put him in a boarding school. Bullshit. He grew up poor. That never happened. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Gwen's trying to find true love because her mom told a story about how she met her dad and how they fell in love at some fucking JFK fucking party out in the fucking uh, I don't know where the, where it was. Uh, maybe in the fucking by Martha's Vineyard out in some fucking cabin out in the woods. You know the kind of place where fucking Senator Ted Kennedy would pick up girls and then fucking kill them in the Chappaquiddick River. Yeah, that kind of party. He met her dad there. He had flowers, whatever. Blah blah. blah. They fell in love. She fucking kissed him immediately. Even though she didn't really know him and, and next thing you know They're married And they had Gwen And now they're happily married Well they're not happily married We'll find that out later And she wants a love story Like that to happen to her So uh, what does she do to that Well she fucks a bunch Of nerdy nerdy guys in high school uh, She falls down at the prom uh, she, she grudge fucks a guy On top of her family piano Okay And then uh, also She starts fucking Her professor in grad school Okay Which she's in love with You know And she's always talking about him And then uh, she catches him With a fucking guy One, one of her male students In her class uh, so she decides that she gets all upset. She writes this poem about it, about breaking up, which unfortunately I did. I just subjected to in the last video, the, the entire poem. Okay. Uh, she wrote it and she said it out loud uh, verbatim uh, from memory. 
Uh, yeah, from memory, because she, she lost the poem she wrote it down on, the paper she wrote it down, the poem on. But Nick found it because it was underneath the model he almost smashed her with because they went to the same school. They just didn't meet each other. Okay, he smashed his model because it was criticized. It almost hit her. She was downstairs writing her poem. It almost hit her. They almost met right there, but they didn't. Anyway, uh, her poem was actually stuck to the bottom of his fucking model. So he read it out loud. He loved it. He wished he could find the author. Okay, and then she read the actual poem. She, she recited it from memory in the classroom to piss off her fucking professor that she caught well, kissing um, uh, a dude, all right, or oh, another classmate, <laughs> okay, so, so that's where we left off last time, okay, and now she's a professional, uh, now she's uh, actually interviewing with a guy named Bob, okay, now Bob is, I don't know if he's an attorney, or if he's an agent, or is he a publisher, I'm not really sure, they're, they're, they're kind of fickle on that in this movie, they don't really tell you, but he, anyway, he's representing uh, Francesca Landfield, who's now grown up, Okay, and she's now she's played by uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay, so Francesca Lanfield was a TV star. She was on that, that hit show, uh, One Big Happy Family. Like I said, a spoof of the Brady Bunch, and she played uh, the, the middle aged girl. Okay, Taffy, who had she had a fucking uh, catchphrase on the show like "Right, Stinky," you know, and Stinky was the fucking dog, that you know, Tiger from fucking uh, Brady Bunch. Okay, so yeah, so she's grown up now, and she's been in and out of rehab uh, ever since the show got canceled. Like she's basically a Lindsay Lohan. Okay, she's fucking doing crystal meth. She's She's fucking whoring around, wearing tight clothes, getting tattoos, fucking wearing the black eyeliner, basically being fucking Carrie Bradshaw uh, from Sex and the City and smoking a shitload of cigarettes just like Carrie Bradshaw did. Okay, so anyway, so that's going on here. And she's got hired to write her autobiography. Okay, so she's interviewing with this guy. His name is Bob. And this guy, first of all, the suit that he's wearing in the office, okay, is about two sizes too fucking big for him. That's a suit like a fat guy should be wearing. And he's fucking skinny, okay? He's wearing this suit. I know, I know, I know in the 90s that was kind of a style with the big shoulder pads and shit. I remember I had suits like that myself back then. But goddamn, this suit just does not fit him. And I think that that was a creative choice from the director. Uh, the fucking, this is his first feature film. He did a lot of TV shows. But he's only done two feature films. And the second one hadn't even come out yet okay so that should tell you something about his directing skills but maybe that was his choice i don't fucking know uh but yeah so the suit just obviously is too big and i, I couldn't stop focusing on that like oh my god his clothes do not fit him okay while he's interviewing uh, uh gwen gwen moss Okay, anyway, so they're interviewing, she explains to her the whole backstory, how she dropped out of grad school after that shit happened, and then she started ghostwriting for people, okay, she started ghostwriting diet books and, you know, shit like that, you know, uh, one of the titles was, uh, you know, <laughs> eat less, move around more, that kind of shit, anyway, uh, the guy Bob, uh, I guess he's an agent or whatever, he's, he's very dismissive, okay, he's very like, you know, okay, well, well, well. Uh, you are going to be hired to write uh, for Francesca. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, just like that, dude. What the fuck kind of man is this? Men don't act this way. Like, what the fuck? I mean, I know this is a rom-com, and there's supposed to be that hyperbolic acting, you know, that you see on fucking sitcoms. All like, you know? Like that, like, people always act like that on fucking sitcoms, but this guy's just taking it too far. Okay, because we haven't gotten that. So far, so far it's been pleasant, very, the levity has been high, it's been very upbeat so far, and then all of a sudden this guy shows up here and he just ruins the fucking movie right there. That acting is just fucking horrible, that acting belongs on a fucking, like an I Love Lucy sitcom, it doesn't belong in a fucking rom-com, that's, that's way too much. If you're going to have that kind of a tone in this movie, the whole movie needs to be that way, and it's not. The whole movie needs to be like an episode of Three's Company, and it's not. It's just this one scene because this one guy, even Gwen, she's overacting as well. I'm sorry, Jean Triplehorn is not a great actress, at least not in this movie. Okay, and she wasn't in Waterworld either, okay? But she's just like, she doesn't pull off the whole fucking nerdy girl thing very well. She's too fucking beautiful for that. Her face is too fucking beautiful. Okay, I can't, I can't picture this girl having a problem finding a guy. It's not believable. Okay, anyway, she's trying to play it off, but she's not nowhere near as high tempo as this guy, okay? Uh, this guy, Rob, you know? So anyway, this guy, Bob, sorry, his name's Bob, okay? So Gwen tells her that she doesn't uh, want to write anything original during her interview, okay? She doesn't think that much of her work. She doesn't even, she doesn't even like her own work that she does, okay? Um, and she's a chain smoker, okay? So basically, she tells him, hey, listen, do you mind if I smoke in here? And he's like... Hold on, and he locks the fucking door, and he turns off the smoke tray. He's like, I think I'll join. Now, she thinks she's gonna, he's going to rape her or something. But he's like, uh, I think I'd like to join you. you know? So he's been trying to quit as well. Okay, so they're both smoking in the office there. Okay, everybody smokes in this movie, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, they both like uh, quit. Like I said, Francesca, uh, er, Francesca, everybody loves Taffy. Now, Taffy was Francesca Lanfield's character on that show. Okay, and uh, she's supposed to be there at this meeting, but she never showed up. 
for whatever reason, okay? So he decides to call her. Bob decides to call her. He has the secretary do it, and then she calls him back, all right? Now, uh, when he mentions to Gwen that, hey, listen, uh, we're considering hiring you to write Francesca uh, Landfield's autobiography, uh, uh, Gwen is like, oh, you know what? I thought she was dead. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know. Everyone thinks that. <laughs> Everyone thinks she's dead. That's because she hasn't fucking worked in a long time, okay? But yeah, that, that's the catching uh, joke throughout the whole the whole movie. It's like, I thought you were dead. Whenever someone mentions uh, Francesca Linfield, who's that? Oh, that was Taffy from uh, One Big Happy Family. He's like, oh, I thought she was dead. <laughs> Everyone says that. It's like a running joke throughout the whole fucking uh, movie. Okay. Okay, so she's got, you know, uh, so that's going on here. And Bob said, you know, yeah, she gets that a lot, you know. And then all of a sudden, uh, he starts getting very emotional. Like I said, like I said before, we do a little, yeah, she gets that a lot. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like just like that like what the fuck kind of guy is this it's not a fucking real man okay anyway so that's going on here <clears throat> he starts getting emotional okay francesca finally calls him back okay and she said and we find out that she's at this actual architectural firm uh, having a business meeting she took a smoke break to talk on her cell phone <clears throat> Now, apparently, this architecture firm is begging her to sell this condo that she owns in L.A. called La Fortuna. It's a condominium complex. She's never been there before. She owns it, but she her her agent bought it for her. Her manager bought it for her when she was a teenager uh, just so she could have a tax, uh, a, a safe haven for her taxes, you know, just so she can own something. She wouldn't blow, because she was blowing through her fucking, her whole fortune that she made on the show after it got canceled. She was blowing through all her money on crystal meth. So her manager bought this place as some sort of financial security for her, okay? <clears throat> so that's the reason she owns it. Anyway, uh, these, uh, these, uh, this architecture firm wants to tear it down, wants to buy it from her, tear it down, and build up their own uh, uh, con condominium complex uh, in that same spot, okay? So they're basically begging her to sell, and she feels like she's in a position of power now, and if she likes it, she finds it highly enjoyable. You're going to find that out. That's how she, she always describes the adjective before the fucking, um, uh, she describes the adjective, okay, uh, to everything that she does. Everything to her is highly enjoyable or highly distasteful or highly unenjoyable or shit like that. She always says that throughout the entire fucking movie, okay? Okay, uh, well, all, all the men that work at this fucking architecture firm, they're all beta males, okay? They're all fucking like, like simpy beta males, except for Nick. Nick works there, okay? Now, we, now the first thing that caught us here was Nick, uh, Nick is getting his ass chewed at the moment by Timo. Timo was his instructor in college, okay? But now I guess that's his supervisor at this architecture firm, okay? The same bald guy that criticized his model, okay? Well, apparently he's getting chewed out in, in the office right now uh, because uh, he had been doing some moonlighting, okay? He works for this architecture firm, but he's also been doing architecture on the side without telling his boss, which he's not allowed to do. You, I mean, you get fired for this. This actually happened to Frank Lloyd Wright. He was working for a guy, for Daniel Burnham, okay? Um, for Daniel Burnham, this famous architecture uh, ar architect guy in Chicago uh, back in the 18, late 1800s, okay? Uh, Burnham, Burnham and Roots, okay? The, the most famous architecture firm in Chicago, in the history of Chicago, okay? Well, Frank Lloyd Wright was working for them, but he was also designing buildings on the side and getting paid for it. Well, when they when Daniel Burnham found out about that, he fired Frank Lloyd Wright, which forced him to go uh, uh, to go independent, okay? Which, which of course, made him a, a famous architect in his own right, okay? Uh, no pun intended. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what happened to Frank Lloyd Wright. Right? So that's kind of what's happening here, only he's getting reprimanded for it, but he doesn't get fired. And any other company would fire you for doing this, all right? If, if, you, uh, you know, if your job is to run a McDonald's, okay, to run a McDonald's, and then you're also cooking your own hamburgers across the street and selling them, okay, uh, and keeping all that money, you're going to get fired. Okay? You can't fucking do that, all right? But that's what he's doing, and he just gets like a fucking slap on the wrist, okay? Uh, he's getting chewed out because he designed a restaurant uh, called The Awful Truth in downtown L.A., Okay, Nick designed a restaurant called The Awful Truth. Uh, Ice Cube was there. Okay, everyone says that throughout the whole fucking movie. Hey, I saw Ice Cube there. Okay, I guess that's a big deal or some shit. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so he's getting reprimanded for that because he did that without his company's permission. Okay, he's been moonlighting, all right? Okay, so his punishment for that is they're going to build a brand new, once they buy that uh, La Fortuna uh, from... Um, um, from Francesca, once they buy it, they're going to build their own uh, uh, condos there, okay? And because uh, his reprimand is he's not going to be allowed uh, to design the new condos. Someone else is going to design the condos. Someone else is going to get paid for that work, okay? Which pisses him off, 
okay? Because uh, his boss thinks that like, he's not ready for it, okay? He doesn't have an experience to do that. And also, he's been, he's been fucking them over, okay? Which, of course, he should be fired for that. But anyway, he's not. But he is allowed to sit in on the meeting that they're about to have with Francesca, okay? But he's not allowed to talk. Okay, so of course these two beta males that work there, uh, that work at the Arctic, they, they recognize Francesca as Taffy uh, from fucking One Big Happy Family, and they tell him, they tell Nick, oh my god, that's Taffy's in here, that's Taffy over there from One Big Happy Family, I thought she was dead! Yeah, exactly, so he looks over there, he's like, oh! Okay, and then he tells the guys, okay, because these guys are nerdy guys, and he's like a good-looking suave guy, right? <laughs> Nick, he's, he's like, oh my god, I had, the, I had the hots for her when I was a little boy. Oh my god, I used to love that girl. <gasps> That's really her over there, damn, you know? Anyway, so he's kind of excited. This is the girl he's had a crush on. I'd be excited too, honestly. You know, I mean, if, uh, you know, if I saw, you know, if I was, uh, you know, in my 20s or something, and then, oh, then suddenly there's Eve Plum from the fucking Brady Bunch there, you know, at my job, I would be like, oh my god. You know, and now obviously Eve Plum is a hell of a lot older than I am, but you know, I watched the reruns when I was a little kid and I thought she was hot and I had a crush on her. I did, I did. I liked Eve Plum, but I, I didn't like Marsha. I liked Eve, I liked uh, Jan Brady. That was, that was one I thought for Jan Brady. Absolutely. Fucking Lully. Anyway, so yeah, so he's there. He's, he's excited that Francesca's there. Of course, thought she was dead, but she's not dead. Like I said, that's a running joke. He gets excited. And she notices him too. Now, out of all these men, it's all men in this building, this architecture firm, uh, Nick is the only good looking one there. So, of course, she's going to notice him. Like, like, she's smoking her cigarette. She's like, mm. like that. You know, the typical fucking, uh, you know, eye fucking, you know. Okay. And she tells them that she won't sell. Uh, she's not going to sell it because that's all she, that's the only thing she owns is that fucking uh, condo. Okay. Uh, she's not going to sell off her tuna. But Nick starts flirting with her. Okay. She's like, I already spoke to my lawyer and he told me that. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, ah, yeah, but you know, Nick tells her this. He's like, but you, what your lawyer didn't tell you is that you would be a full partner. You would have absolute participation because that's what you deserve. Just like that, all suave. She's just like, <laughs> like you can see her pussy just. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's all about it, right? <laughs> she, so anyway. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, while this is going on, Bob calls her cell phone. So she, she and she's like, uh, he wants to have dinner with her uh, because she 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 can't she canceled the meeting with Gwen. So he says, let's all meet for dinner, okay? Instead, and he wants to take her to the Awful Truth, okay? And she's like, oh no no, we can't go to the Awful Truth. We'll never get a table there. And then Nick's like, uh, actually, uh, <laughs> I think I might be able to help you out there because you see that restaurant, the Awful Truth. Uh, I designed it. She's like, oh, you designed that restaurant? He's like, well, yeah, yeah, I did. And he's like, oh, my God, I, love, I saw Ice Cube there. <laughs> so she's like, absolutely, we're going to go to the Apple Truth, okay? Okay, so that's going on, okay? And and uh, so she's all excited. Now she feels like she's met a rock star, okay? She's like, I love it there. I saw Ice Cube there. Because you must be so fucking proud. Don't you just love the way it turned out? You know, uh, so she decides, she, she looks at the, at the owners of the architecture firm and she tells them, okay, I'm going to sell, but I want to do it the way he said. I'll be made a partner and I'll have full participation. And so they discuss it for a second, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, so they discuss it for a second. He goes, and also Nick here gets to design the new building. All right, yeah, just like that, okay? Well, honestly, Nick needs to get fired, okay? They already told him to stay the fuck out of this meeting. He jumped right in there, okay? Uh, so that's all going on, okay? Fran says, like, you know... Uh, so so while, the, while the owners are talking amongst themselves, uh, Nick and, uh, and Francesca have a private moment together while they're smoking, okay? And, of course, he's got a lighter because he's a smoker, too, just like she is. And she tells him, I enjoy bending men to my will. Yeah, a real likable girl, you know? Uh, but you don't want my help, do you? You don't want anything from anybody. Tell me the story. I want to hear the story. So now she's openly flirting with him. And start from the beginning. He's like, well, maybe, maybe this is the beginning. Which is a good line. I'm going to give it to you. Great fucking job there, Dylan McDermott. He delivered that line perfectly. Like, that's the way I would have said it. In fact, I have used that line. It's gotten me laid several times. <laughs> Absolutely. I wrote that one down. <laughs> 
<laughs> did I tell you I love this movie? Okay, well, nobody else did. All right, so anyway, uh, so that's going on here. Uh, his boss, Timo, like I said, uh, pulls him to the side and tells him, hey, listen, are you sure you want to do this? Because once you start down that road, there's no going back. In other words, he's telling her, hey, listen, if you want to start fucking seducing the fucking uh, the clients in here, you know, uh, you know, and start making deals, you know, uh, behind our back, basically. And this time you did it in front of us, okay? But still, we didn't authorize you to make that deal, okay? And doing shit behind our back, you know, once you start going down this road, there's no going back, okay? And he's like, oh. He looks at her. He looks at Frenchie. He's like, I wouldn't want to. You know, what's like, it's kind of wish fulfillment, okay? It's that he's getting to bone. He's going he's gonna to fuck uh, his childhood crush who was a famous actress uh, back in the early 70s, okay? So, yeah, I can understand the charm in that. Yeah, like I said, I'd do it too if it was Eve Plum. Absolutely, because I wouldn't be fucking Eve Plum. Okay, I would be fucking Jan Brady. <laughs> yeah. And guys, I, don't tell me you never thought about that. I know most of you are Marshall guys, but I was always a Jan guy. I'm sorry, I am. Okay, uh, so now we get to see the restaurant called The Awful Truth. Now, at The Awful Truth, okay, uh, Gwen arrives there, and she has a hard time finding the front entrance because there's no fucking sign that says entrance, okay? It's like part of the wall, so she actually she can't find the door handle. She can't find the door, uh, so she just backs, she just like leans back, and fucking it opens up by itself, okay? Of course, it takes her a good fucking 30 fucking feet to fall down. So for 30 feet, she's like, ah! like yeah, just like that. Just like that. They're trying to make her a clutch. It does not work. Okay, this is not one of the reasons I love this movie. It's not because of her or her performance. I mostly like Nick's performance, okay? Um, so she goes, she, she falls backwards and she bumps into people while she's falling backwards. Like I said, it took her 30 fucking feet to fall down backwards. Okay, it makes a big spectacle of herself, okay? Uh, okay, so that's going on. Then she finally does fall down. Okay, and like I said, it doesn't work because, like, it doesn't work because uh, Jean Triplehorn is no Kristen Wiig. She's no Lucille Ball. She's no Anna Ferris, okay? She's no Carol Burnett. Carol, all, all those women I just mentioned could have pulled that scene off and it would have been hilarious, okay? But I'm sorry, Jean Triple is not a comedic actress. She's just not. Not in this movie, at least. And they're trying to make her that. It's, it sucks when, when Hollywood tries to do that. They're trying to make you into something that you're not, okay? It just doesn't work. It doesn't work, all right? Okay, so uh, uh, when she finally gets to the hostess stand, okay, there's the maitre d' right there, and there's this big white light that's flashing in her face. She can't see nothing until he stands in front of the light and that blocks it, okay? And he's this big fucking asshole. She's like, oh, my God, is this place even finished? He's just like, uh, I'm here to meet uh, Bob. And he's like, uh, you know. You know, so she's, and he's very rude to her, okay? And she keeps bumping into stuff, you know, and if I just follow me. Okay, so she follows him, of course. Uh, she starts bumping into shit, you know. Um, you know, like I said, uh, the glare's in her eyes, okay. Uh, she, she, she bumps her head into the fucking panel right there, this beam that's in the middle of the fucking floor. This entire restaurant's got sharp edges everywhere. It's got sharp edged objects that are spinning around, okay. It's got uneven floors. It's got uneven stairs, okay. Uh, the, the, the whole fucking, the, the whole restaurant is a fucking lawsuit, waiting to fucking happen, okay? Like, who the fuck would it, no building permit code would, no, no building inspectors would ever allow a building like this, okay? The the the, the, the text, the, the specs, uh, the archi architect specs for this building, the blueprints for this building would have never been approved, okay? The building looks like shit, the restaurant looks like absolute fucking shit. Silver, it's got jagged edges everywhere, the floor is uneven, okay? Like I said, it's a fucking lawsuit, okay? I'm surprised nobody's died yet in this fucking place. Okay, all you have to do is fall down and you'll get impaled. Okay, it's it's terrible. Okay, it's not very believable at all. Okay, they should have picked a more. Uh, they should what they should have done is they should have picked like a stupid looking restaurant, but a safe stupid looking restaurant. Okay, that would have been cool. Like it's like for adults, but it's like it's like a Chuck E. Cheese type looking thing, but with no kids. You know that kind of thing would have been more, more funny. Instead, they went with a fucking place that's very dangerous. It looks very dangerous in there. Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean the holes, the vents, and they got they have vents on the floor, whole vents on the floor. You could easily put your fucking high heel, your stiletto would easily fall in there and break off while you're trying to walk, which would cause you to break your ankle, fall down, and sue the fuck out of the goddamn restaurant. You see, so this would never happen in real life. Then you got that that bright fucking light that's in your face when you're standing in front of the maitre d. All that shit's bullshit. You can't even find the, the entrance to the fucking place. Okay, this would never pass the fire inspection codes. All right, but anyway, you're supposed to go with it because it's a rom com, right? Uh, it's supposed to highlight her fucking her uh, her clumsiness, okay. But any any normal person would fucking get injured in this fucking restaurant, okay. Not just fucking uh, a clumsy fucking um, uh, Butterfingers fucking Gwen, okay. 
So that's going on here, okay? She keeps bumping into shit on her way to the table, okay? Like I said, it's a restaurant waiting to ha a lawsuit waiting to happen, okay? Uh, and meanwhile, Bob, Beta Bob, uh, I guess the book publisher or whatever, or fucking uh, Francesca's agent, he's there uh, wearing an oversized suit again, all right? He's there. He greets her, okay? But he's very emotional and he's very awkward, like, like he was in the, in the meeting, like he was earlier in the movie, all right? Okay, uh, because app apparently Francesca canceled their dinner date. Okay, it was supposed to be the three of them having dinner because she canceled the actual uh, uh, the actual uh, business meeting. She canceled it. Well, now she canceled this. Okay, the dinner date. So it's just gonna be Gwen and him talking. All right, at the last minute. Okay, well we all know the reason she canceled the dinner date was because she wanted to go fuck Nick. All right. So Bob uh, starts crying. He's just like uh, Francesca would not be joining us. <laughs> <laughs> just like that in front of Gwen a, a woman that he's only known for like fucking 15 minutes Jesus Christ you know like I said Jesus fucking Christ alright uh, so he starts crying in front of her now Gwen of course fucking can't handle a man a grown man crying in front of her for, for apparently no reason okay uh, like you know and then he tells her like, Francesca and I we were we were involved but I have moved on I have moved on I'm moving on I have moved on. I have, I have, I've moved on. <laughs> Just like that. Jesus fucking Christ. You see, early in the movie, uh, uh, Nick's girlfriend uh, was yelling at him because he doesn't open up emotionally to her. Well, this is what fucking happens when the guys open up emotionally to them. This is what it looks like. Is this what turns you on, ladies? No, it doesn't. Anyway. So Gwen can't handle this shit. She has to wear the bathroom. And, oh, okay, okay. You know, and she keeps bumping her elbow into the fucking table for some dumb reason. She runs to the bathroom. She can't handle this fucking, uh, this guy, this grown man crying in front of her at the fucking dinner table. Okay. Okay, so meanwhile, uh, back at Nick's place, he lives in a loft, okay, uh, in L.A., okay. Um, uh, his girlfriend, sorry, Nick's, Nick's girlfriend is at the restaurant. She's on her cell phone talking to Nick. Okay, and he's canceling his dinner date with her too. <laughs> Something about he can't. And then we see Nick. He's at his loft. He's talking to her on the phone. He's telling her basically, "Yeah, my dad, dude. He he got to a plane crash. You know, he was fucking flying that Learjet alone. I warned him not to fly that Learjet by himself. Anyway, he crashed this. So it's crazy right now. So I'm not gonna be able to make it to dinner tonight. So okay, sorry about it. Bye. Okay, he hangs up on her. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I've said some whoppers. Uh, to women before uh, to get out of shit because I was being shady, uh, but nothing like that. Okay, it's not believable. Yeah, my dad did fucking he was in a plane crash today. That's why I can't meet you for dinner tonight. Uh, but I'll see you tomorrow. Now get the fuck out of here. That's a bullshit fucking lie. Nobody would ever believe that. All right. But anyway, that's what he uses. And, and the worst part about this scene is that is that a Francesca standing right there. She heard everything that he said about the plane crash, about warning her his dad not to fly, all that kind of shit about talking to his girlfriend. Hey, I'm not gonna make make to dinner tonight, honey, because uh, my dad. Uh, was in a plane crash, you know, you know, and she heard the whole fucking thing, and then she had the balls to ask him, uh, what was all that about? He's like, oh, no, nothing, that was just work-related, yeah, I just had to cancel an appointment, that's all. Uh, uh, weren't you supposed to be uh, having an appointment tonight, too? He's like, oh, yeah, I canceled it, too. Okay, she was supposed to meet them for dinner, okay, at the Awful Truth, all right, and he was supposed to meet his girlfriend at the Awful Truth for dinner, okay? Get it? Get the, get the uh, parallel similarities here? All right, <clears throat> so that's going on here. And uh, we see his loft, okay? It's a big loft, but uh, all of his stuff is unpacked. Okay, it looks like he's just there temporarily. He has, he has no furniture, really. He has nothing there. He just has his personal belongings. Maybe his bedroom is, is, is equipped, but that's it. Okay, like he's got, he's got no real, he's got all this empty space in there with nothing there in, in his fucking, in his loft, all right? Okay, and he tells her, you know, she goes, look at this, you got nothing here. You know, all your stuff's unpacked. You know, he's like, oh, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Francesca. You know what this place needs? It needs a piano. Now that goes back to the running gag in this movie about the piano. Gwen's family had a piano that was created by a guy named um, Faustus de Costas, okay, which is an ancestor of Nick's. He created this piano for this woman named Lena that he was in love with during World War II. He built this piano. Uh, the Nazis invaded Lithuania. They had to flee. He bribed some officials so that Lena and her family and the piano could all go to America. And he promised to meet up with them later. That never happened. Uh, Lena never saw him again. And because of that, she refused to ever play that piano again. So that piano just got handed down from generation to generation in Gwen's family. Okay. Well, this guy, uh, uh, Faustus de Contes, he's actually an ancestor of Nick's. Okay. I guess that was his dad's uncle. 
or some shit like that. But we find that out later on, okay? So Gwen has this piano. She knows how to play the piano. Well, Nick does too. She, her mom made her practice the piano, that pr piano in the living room when she was a little girl, okay? And so she knows this piano very well. She even fucked the guy on the piano. We saw that earlier in the movie too, all right? So this piano is a big deal. And what does Nick want? Nick wants a piano because he remembers that his dad, one of the arguments his dad had with his mom when he was a little boy was over a piano. His dad wanted to buy a piano. His mom said, we can't afford it. You're going to put us in the fucking poorhouse. You drunk? You know, that kind of thing, okay? So he's thinking, yeah, this place could really use a piano. Because that's something he always wanted, his own piano, but he never had one. Okay? And, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, so Francesca tells him, you know what? I'd buy you a piano tomorrow. But you, you'd hate it. He's like, you would buy me a piano? She's like, no, I'm telling you, I won't buy you a piano. Because you would prefer the dream of a future piano. Rather than an, an it a piano in actuality, which is true. Okay, basically saying like you you want you want the ideal, uh, the ideal piano instead of a real piano. In other words, you want the ideal, the perfect girlfriend instead of a real girlfriend. Okay, and you're always going to want the perfect girlfriend, so you'll never be happy with whoever's in front of you. Okay, so it's a it's a metaphor for his his dating life. Okay, even, maybe even his career. He wants a perfect ar architecture career, but he doesn't doesn't believe uh, that that. Uh, that if he were to have it, which I think he does, uh, he wouldn't enjoy it. It wouldn't make him happy. Okay, the idea of wanting a perfect, uh, you know, the idea of wanting to be happy, okay, is what he lives in. But if he actually had those things, he wouldn't be happy. Okay, it's always the dream about something is what makes him happy, not the actual, the actual thing itself. Okay. Now she's also telegraphing herself here, okay? Because she also prefers the dream of a perfect relationship, a perfect family, like she had when she was an actress on that fake TV show. Okay, um, you know. She would rather have that than a real family. Because a real family, we find out later on, is bullshit. Okay, just like his was. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to stop my review right here. But I'll be back shortly to continue my review of uh, Till There Was You. I thank you very much for watching this long. And I'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.